Hello again, beautiful people. Did you all have a good Halloween? Get some good delicious candy? Good. Don't get diabetes now. We all know how bad sugar is for you. Moderation, guys. Moderation. Anyway, I don't know why, but I felt like making some more Flat Earth content today. No particular reason. Which is weird, because I usually hate talking about this. One topic I haven't touched yet is the stars on the Flat Earth. I know, a lot of YouTubers have already covered this topic, but I found a video where Eric Dubé actually tries to explain the stars away. This video is almost as hilarious as Flat Earthers trying to make the solar eclipse work on the space pizza. Phenomenal! Earth is a level, motionless plane, with the sun, moon, and stars revolving over and around us, just as you experience every day. Excellent how you're talking in such certainty. It's like you know that the Earth is flat. <sighs> I'm imagining that possibly one day you all will realize, holy shit, the Earth actually is round, and then you all go back and delete all the videos you ever posted. <laughs> That's probably not going to happen though, unfortunately. The North Pole is the magnetic monopole center point, with Polaris, the North Pole star, situated directly above. Polaris is the only motionless star in the heavens, with all the other constellations revolving perfect circles over the Earth every night. Well, no, Polaris isn't completely stationary. In our point of view, Polaris actually does move. It just moves ever so slightly, so it appears as if it's stationary. That's right, Polaris is about one degree off the North Pole. If it were directly on the point, then it wouldn't appear to move in our perspective. But due to this one degree mismatch, we do observe a small change. And as you move further and further south, Polaris moves closer to the horizon, until it eventually disappears. Which is why you can't see it while you're in the Southern Hemisphere. I'm assuming you're going to explain to us how this works on a flat Earth, because if we do live on a space pizza, then we should still be able to see Polaris from the Southern Hemisphere. Let's hear it. The so-called planets, known to the ancients as wandering stars, were named such because they were observed then, as we can observe today, to wander the heavens, taking their own unique spirograph-like patterns, making both forward and retrograde motions over and around the Earth during their cycles. You flat earthers have got to stop referencing people of ancient times as if that somehow strengthens your argument. These people lived way in the past before technological advances. In terms of knowledge, they wouldn't know a thing compared to modern science. For example, bacteria wasn't even discovered until 1670. Electricity wasn't used to light up our houses until 1879. Would you trust ancient people thousands of years ago to treat you if you fell ill to something? Of course not. Then why would you trust them to tell you about other parts of science? Referencing to ancient people and what they believed in doesn't help your argument whatsoever, so let's stop talking about it. Meanwhile, the fixed stars were named such because they were observed then, as we can observe today, to stay fixed in their constellation patterns, never changing their relative positions. If Earth was truly a tilting, wobbling, spinning space ball, rotating a thousand miles per hour on its axis, revolving 67,000 miles per hour around the sun, spiraling 500,000 miles per hour around the galaxy, and shooting off several million more miles per hour through the universe, the star patterns would never look the same two nights in a row, let alone be fixed in exactly the same constellations for thousands upon thousands of years. The problem with your argument right now is the fact that you don't understand this model of the universe. There are two points to be made here. First of all, while yes, the Earth is moving along with the solar system at a very high velocity through space, the stars are also moving too. See, in any galaxy, stars don't just move however they want to. You don't see stars moving in all directions like gas particles in the air. No, stars move in generally the same pattern around the center of the galaxy they are a part of. About half the galaxies rotate clockwise, while the other half counterclockwise. The direction in which the Milky Way rotates is dependent on your perspective, since there is no up or down in space. Either way, it is always in the same direction, and that applies to the stars within that galaxy. While the solar system is rotating around the center of the Milky Way, so are the other stars, in the same direction. This is why constellations appear to be in the same place every night, even after thousands of years. While yes, we are moving, so are they. But that's not to say they move in the same rate as us, which they don't. And this brings me to my second point. Constellations aren't always in the exact same spot. Like Polaris, they move ever so slightly. It's just difficult to notice without using the proper tools. But they do move. Astronomers have actually mapped this out, and the distance of many stars have been calculated to move ever so slightly over the course of a few thousand years, such as Sirius. In fact, there's a term for this, called proper motion, which is a measurement for the observed changes in star positions in our perspective, using the solar system and other distant stars for comparison. And the reason these stars in constellations constellations don't move much is simply due to the sheer size of the galaxy and how far away these stars are. If something is extremely, extremely far away, movement from our end isn't going to change much in terms of its relative observed position in our point of view. And this brings me to a question I have.
have for you, flat earthers. What exactly is the reason on your model that stars and constellations move slightly in the night sky after a period of time? The reality is that the Earth and Polaris do not move, while everything else in the heavens revolves over Earth and around Polaris. Our Earth planetarium, however, is so vast that perspective won't allow any observer to see all the stars simultaneously from any one vantage point. No, 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 there's no reason you wouldn't be able to see all the stars at once on the flat Earth during any time of the day. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, there isn't any reason you shouldn't see Polaris. There's literally nothing in your way, and distance isn't going to make it so you can't see stars in the sky, especially when we have telescopes and technology that will bring celestial objects into view. Facing north, the stars turn counterclockwise from right to left, Facing south, they turn clockwise from left to right. Facing east, they rise in front and set behind, while facing west, they rise behind and set in front. Two things. First of all, on a flat earth there wouldn't be any settings of any stars. There isn't ever a point in which they would fall below the horizon. To be below the horizon, the stars would have to be fucking below the flat earth plane. How else would the land physically cover any star, or any parts of the sun for that matter? Don't give me that perspective bullshit. It's obvious you guys don't know anything about perspective, or how light works whatsoever. For the land to cover up something, and for that thing to be setting below the horizon, it would have to be physically behind it. Which means, on the flat earth, it would be underneath the plane. Second of all, you are being extremely vague in your description of the star's movement, but I can still understand it. Ignoring the rising and setting bullshit, I can see you are giving us the perspective of the star's movements when facing certain directions. But if you could tell us which position the observer is when describing the movement of stars, that would be more helpful. Because guess what? It's different in the southern hemisphere. While the stars do indeed rotate counterclockwise at the north pole, they rotate clockwise in the south pole. And that's the point we're always trying to drill into your heads. On your flat earth model in the south pole, stars would move in a motion around the north side, curving away from the south side. But that's not what we see. In the southern hemisphere, stars rotate clockwise around the south pole. This makes perfect sense if the earth were a ball, since there is a point of axis on the north and also the south. And due to the rotation of the earth, rotation is counterclockwise in the north and clockwise in the south. So now tell me, how exactly do you explain this on the flat earth? So their apparent motion, angle, and inclination changes depending where you are on earth and what direction you are facing. But their actual movement is always east to west. Yes, they are indeed always east to west, but please explain the second pivot point we see that stars revolve around, clockwise, around the South Pole. Oh god, please, this is just incorrect on so many levels. When you're on the equator, stars don't appear to be revolving. They just move in a straight line across the sky, from east to west. If stars were actually in a plane above the dome, on a flat earth, that wouldn't be how we see them. We would see them curve towards the north. Even if I give you the idea that perhaps we can only see a local area of stars around us, we would still see the curve of the stars on the equator. Nope, that shadowy area in your diagram would not be beyond the horizon. Nope. You could just look forwards and you'll see everything there. We need to talk more about the horizon. It seems that you flat earthers just don't get it. This next part is pretty long, so I'm gonna let the clip roll a bit before I make a response.
Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong. Ignoring the fact that your Sky Horizon concept is absolute nonsense, even if the red lines here move in and out of the Sky Horizon, it still wouldn't explain why it curves towards the second circle. This diagram itself is showing that it still has a center point at the North Pole. There's no reason it would curve away from it. The next diagram here makes even less sense, and is more of what you would see on a ball Earth. The red lines here should never be touching or entering the ground at all. This even contradicts your previous drawing where these red lines don't touch the Earth. Finally, even if the horizon is flat, whatever the fuck that means, the path of the star wouldn't curve downwards toward the south no matter how much perspective you apply here. They should always be curving towards the north even if there is a dome altering the viewpoint of a sky perspective. But even so, you have yet to address the most fundamental question of all. When you are in the southern hemisphere, you can actually see this, quote, second circle that you are trying to debunk. Yep, you can see the stars revolve around it just like the North Pole, the only difference being that they rotate clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So far, you are only claiming that the stars appear to rotate around a second pivot point. But what happens if we actually show you that this point exists? Please answer that question. Anyway, I'm tired, so this video is ending here. Thank you to Fireshard for being the top patron this month. I'll see you next week. Don't eat too much candy, okay?